when you look at what you pay for real estate in Mumbai, in terms of the quality and size of what you get, it's one of the worst kind of, you know, bargains, if you will. It's, it's just terrible uh, value for money. The housing stock in general for the entire city is terrible. In fact, uh, the way I look at Mumbai is that 80% of Mumbai is a tear down. It needs to be torn, torn down and redeveloped. And that is happening. So it's happening in two different ways. Uh, one is there's a large number of very old buildings, let's say 50, 60, 70 years, uh, which are relatively low rise, maybe three or four stories. And they have a decent amount of land. And if those are torn down and you know put a 40 story tower in, the economics can become quite interesting. And what the government has done, they've codified in very precise laws how that is supposed to take place and how the interests of the, the apartment owners, the condo owners is protected. So for example, they, uh, there's a method by which the entire building has to agree and the certain percentage of owners have to agree. And then once the, the residents are you know, basically moved out so the demolition can take place, the developer has to pay them a preset monthly rent allowance for the entire period before they can move back in. So someone may have a you know, 800 square foot apartment and they would have negotiated that when I move back in, I get a 2000 square foot apartment, for example. Okay, and whatever else, and my rent for the next three or four years gets paid, something like that. And so these societies will negotiate these deals, but the way the laws are set up, that it, uh, it really is pro apartment owner. And uh, basically the, the developer could, could lose money, but it's in general unlikely that the, the owners would be in the short end of the stick. Uh, they're well protected. So that's, that's good. I think they've done a, a decent job there. And um, on the slum redevelopment side, in general, that's pretty dirty business. It is very political. There's probably a lot of kickbacks. And there's a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, quote unquote, mafia involvement in that entire process, which is why you don't see kind of, uh, you know, organized developers playing in that space. I mean, they basically have no competence to, so there are these kind of third parties who will, you know, do all the work, get the deal kind of done in whatever way they get it done and then present the package to a organized developer and insulate them from that process. And that can work, but basically, yeah, so there, there is some redevelopment taking place. Even there, the laws are very good and they are very enlightened. So for example, the, the slum dwellers have to be given housing in the exact same location. The old rule was that they would move them out like 20 miles or something and give them housing, but their livelihoods are right there. You know, everything for them is right there. So, so now the laws require that you have to give them housing in the same location. So you see this, I think overall reality, you can see this. They have this Ritz Carlton Tower coming up. And if you look carefully right next to it, there's a, you know, maybe 10 story buildings, a few buildings, which is where all the, the old slum dwellers have been uh, given housing right next to the, the Ritz and that works. So I think, I think the, the city over the long haul will go through a complete tear down and rebuild because the land is so valuable, but that whole process will happen in fits and starts. Mm-hmm.